This video is produced as a study guide for students enrolled in the EPO 322 Diesel Engineering 2 simulation course held at Cal, Cal Maritime. This video is the second part of a two-part series. The discussion is on slow-speed diesel engine fuel oil injection systems. So this is the Burmeister Wayne slow speed port and helix pump that has been modified with a suction valve, a puncture valve, and variable injection timing. And this is a cutaway of an actual pump. Up at the top, you'll see there where the puncture valve is located. And you can also see the suction valve, the barrel assembly, the plunger, and the wasting ports on either side of the pump housing that are in line with the spill ports. So in this close-up, you can see that puncture valve, the actuating piston, a pneumatic signal would be applied to the top of that piston, and then as it moves down, you've got a, a plunger that would push open the puncture valve, there's a check valve, and then the fuel above the pump plunger instead of going to the injection on the injection stroke would be able to be released to go back to the suction gallery of the pump. This gives a positive shutdown of the pump of the pneumatic air signal and this is very desirable both to have as an emergency shutdown and also it is used on start up of the engine so that you are not delivering fuel and with start air coming into the combustion chamber. So again, this shows the fuel um, in the blue. That is the fuel that's surrounding the pump barrel. And you can see up at the top the puncture valve, the suction valve below that. And you can also see the outline of what is called the shock absorber. And this is a parts breakdown of this pump. Now, the suction valve was installed instead of a delivery valve because this engine is provided with recirculation back to the system when the main engine is shut down. And what I mean by this is that this is a heavy fuel oil system there is a concern that when the engine is shut down that the fuel up the inside the, the high pressure pump and the high pressure pipe could cool and become too viscous for injection. So this system is set up not only will the heavy fuel oil circulate within the main circulating system but when the engine is shut down recirculation is provided through the high pressure pump through the high pressure pipe to the injector and then back to the system on a continuous basis it's a small amount of, of fuel flow but there's this continuous flow when the engine is shut down and that will maintain the viscosity right to the injector tip now once injection begins the recirculation will stop and injection begins. They're never simultaneously because that would destroy that pressure wave that we want for the, the shock wave that will open the injector needle valve. And this is a cutaway of the Burmeister Wayne injector. Now it looks very similar to the injectors used on the Enterprise engine aboard the training ship, though quite a bit larger. The major modification of this, though, 
is internally it has two needle valves. The needle valve at the top provides for circulation, fuel recirculation, or injection. And then it has a standard needle valve at the bottom. Now, starting at the, at the left, we have circulation. And when you, the engine is shut down, you're only, uh, you're only looking about nine bar going to up the high pressure pipe to the injector needle valve, or excuse me, to this recirculation needle valve. With that low pressure, it will be seated on the lower end and no fuel will be allowed to go down to the main injection needle. And this opens up a port that allows the fuel to enter the injector and then circulate back to the system. So the reason that the suction valve is provided on the Burmeister Wine high pressure pump is because otherwise when the pump was shut down, if the, if the plunger helix was covering the spill port, you would not have circulation to this injector. So while the engine shut down with the low pressure, this, circ this needle valve for recirculation has shut off the port to a, the injection needle valve and opened a port allowing recirculation. As soon as the main engine starts to turn over and injection commences, that high pressure uh, on a Burmeister Wayne slow speed, well mostly a crosshead slow speed engine. On a crosshead slow speed engine, injection pressures are typically about 1,000 bar. That pressure coming into the injector will lift up the needle valve and that recirculation needle valve when it lifts up it closes off the port for recirculation and opens the port down to the main needle. Once that pulse goes down to the main needle the main needle valve lifts up and injection commences. So again the, this is pressure dependent at normal uh, fuel system pressure, which is only about usually between 7 and, and 9 bar. The recirculation needle valve will, cut, will, will close the port that goes to the main injection needle, open a port for recirculation. Once the injection starts, that high pressure at 1,000 bar injection pressures lifts the recirculation needle valve, swapping the two ports, recirculation is cut off, and main injection begins. So, if we didn't have a suction valve, what would happen is, again, if the, the plunger stopped with a helix, covering the spill ports. There would be no way of getting fuel through this pump up to the high pressure pipe into the injector. So they added a suction valve. And whenever the pressure is lower above the barrel, right, in that space, then the incoming inlet fuel supply. Fuel will flow through the suction valve and spill in above the pump plunger. Now, this is an interesting drawing. You can see the, the, the fuel rack, the variable injection timing rack. You can see the position of the shock absorber and the puncture valve up above. By the way, there, are, um, there have been changes in the, in the design of the suction and puncture valve and they, you can get different pumps that look slightly different, but they all act the same way. So, if the pressure on both sides of the suction valve is the same, or if it's higher in the chamber above the pump plunger, then the suction valve will be closed. But as the pump plunger moves down or any time 
that the pressure is lower in the in the chamber above the pump plunger, that suction valve will open and allow fuel into the into the barrel and equalize that pressure. So even when the engine's running, as it moves down and takes a suction, there will be fuel flooding in the suction valve above the pump plunger. But the major part of this is what we're what we're actually looking for is when the engine shut down and the injector, that needle valve, shifts for recirculation, the fuel will be able to flood back to the recirculation system and fuel will be able to flow through this pump, through the suction valve, and into the high pressure line to the injector. And there's a circulation of fuel back to the system to make sure that the fuel viscosity is correct at the injector tip. So when you go to start this engine, you'll know that you'll get proper atomization and the engine will start. So this is a close-up of that pump and very similar to the drawing that we just looked at. You can see the two high pressure pipes above the, uh, at the top of the cover of this high pressure pump. In between them, you'll see the pneumatic control line or the puncture valve. And you can see the shock absorber in the background. You can also see on this how the high pressure pipes have a secondary cover over the high pressure line. That is there in case that there is a rupture of the high pressure pipe that that fuel will be contained within that secondary cover. And then that drains down uh, to a small tank. And that small tank has a float in it so that if there is a rupture and there's a large amount of leakage that that wind would, would flow down and start filling up this little tank and that would lift up a float, an electronic sensor, that would sound an alarm that you've had a rupture of a high pressure pipe. Now, if that is not contained and if it was to spray into the engine room, it's very high likelihood that you could have a major fire in the engine room. So by, by, uh, by law or by as far as the regulatory agencies, you have to have a secondary cover over the top of the high pressure pipe that would contain that fuel in the case of a rupture. So here is the shock absorber. And basically what this is, is a piston type hydraulic accumulator. And as we saw before, it was mounted to the suction gallery of this pump. Every time that that high pressure pipe ends its effective stroke, you are bleeding down that high pressure fuel into the suction gallery. Every time that the high pressure pump ends its effective stroke, in other words, the helix lines up with the spill port and you end injection by spilling that fuel back to the suction gallery of the pump, so coming in, we're seeing 7 bar, and all of a sudden you're dropping down in a 1,000 bar pressure spike. Well, this has a piston, an accumulator piston, and it has springs. And that fuel normally would be 7 bar that is on the working face of that piston, and that's going to compress that spring a little bit. But when you get this 1,000 bar pressure spike, that piston will move very quickly, will move and absorb that pressure spike so that you don't tax your fuel lines going to the engine. So this absorbs pressure pulsations in the, in the, the fuel lines of the Burmeister Wayne engine and those pressure spikes are from the end of the effective stroke at each cylinder firing where you dump high pressure fluid down into your fuel line. 
and this will help prevent any leaks or damage to the fuel line. And this is mounted directly onto the high pressure fuel pump. So again, in the background, you're seeing there, you can see that shock absorber. Now let's talk lubrication a little bit. We had talked about that briefly before, where you have to have fuel, some fuel leakage down the pump between the barrel and the plunger to lubricate those parts. On the older designs, that fuel, as it leaked off the pump plunger, would fall onto the, the camshaft follower and onto the roller. Now, a camshaft and the follower are heavily, there's a lot of lubricating oil being sprayed on those components. There's a lot of force that to, to pump fuel up to a thousand bar. And you have a lot of, it is a rolling friction, but there's still friction involved. So you will have sprays flooding that roller and the camshaft lobe to give lubrication. And then that fuel would mix in with the main engine lube oil and dilute it. So here you have an engine where there's no products of combustion getting into the getting into the main engine lube oil from the combustion process because you have a piston rod seal on a crosshead engine. But now we're mixing in fuel. And with the fuel dilution, at some point, you would have to change your lube oil. So the older designs of the Burmeister Wayne, because of this, had a separate camshaft lube oil system that when you had a sufficient fuel dilution, you would have to drain that tank and refill it. They changed the design, and on today's design is to the right. And you'll notice they lifted the pump up and put an intermediate piece in between. And then you have this umbrella seal that is over the top of the follower that would prevent oil that's leaking down the plunger. Instead of going down and getting onto the follower, it will flow down and flow into the space in that intermediate piece. And you can see that there's a fuel oil drain. So with this, that oil, fuel oil that's dripping down, instead of getting into the main engine lube oil, it goes into the intermediate space and then flows down to a drain tank. And with the newer design, you no longer have to have a camshaft lube oil system because you don't have the problem of fuel oil getting into the lube oil system. So this is the, a slide from Burmeister Wayne that shows this. And what you can see in the middle, you can see what they're showing with the droplets of oil hit that umbrella seal and then are drained away. Next subject is how to reverse a slow speed uniflow crosshead engine. When you reverse a slow speed crosshead engine, you have to change the timing on the start air distributor. You have to change the timing on the fuel oil pumps. You do not have to change timing for exhaust valves. Exhaust valve is timing is pretty symmetrical. So there is no timing change for the exhaust valve. At this point we are going to talk about how we will later on on how we change the, the start air timing. But what we're going to concentrate right now is on how Burmeister Wing changes the fuel pump timing. One of the things when you're looking at that camshaft load, it's a little different than what you're used to. Instead of having a nose to the cam, this has a depression. So normally the high pressure fuel pump plunger would be at its top position. And then as that camshaft rolls over, It'll move down and take a suction stroke and then move up for a delivery stroke. To change the timing, there is on the follower, there is a mechanism that will shift the angle of the follower in relation to the camshaft. 
and there is a pneumatic actuator that will move that follower back and forth for that timing change. I have an animation that I'll show you that illustrates this. So this would be running in the astern position, and then now we've shifted to the ahead position. And you can see how that follower just shifted angle. Let's do it again. So this pneumatic actuator will move that, will rock that follower back and forth. And it's not a lot of angle change. It's a fairly small angle change to be able to do that. And each of the fuel pumps will have a pneumatic actuator to change its individual follower, follower position. Of note, when you shift with the engine stopped, when you shift from a head and a stern, if you have a follower that is in that depression on the cam fuel camshaft lobe, the pneumatic signal is not enough to force it to change with the engine stopped. But when the engine starts to roll, then it will shift. So on the Burmeister wing, when you are shifting from a head to stern, you will have indicator lights that will indicate that these have shifted to the proper position. If you don't have that with the engine stop, that's okay. But as soon as the engine starts, you need to make sure that all of your, your followers have shifted into the proper position. Now, if one of them hasn't, and that sometimes happens, you can operate like that for a short period, but you need to immediately notify either the chief engineer or the bridge that you have a problem, because they're going to want to go to a secure anchorage and shut down until that problem can be corrected. So when on a Burmeister Wayne, it's important that you check that once the engine is started, that you have the proper light for the proper direction of the engine. Now this is just showing, I put this in place to show and talk briefly about the camshaft lobes. On the Burmeister Wayne, the camshaft lobes are hydraulically pressed um, onto or stretched in reality. They're stretched and then put along a round camshaft. And then when the hydraulic pressure is released, they lock on. Fuel pump lobes can become damaged. And on these engines, if they are damaged, there's enough room that you can hydraulically stretch the fuel pump lobe, move it forward on the camshaft, and then put a two-piece replacement um, that is actually bolted on. You don't actually have to cut the camshaft or either the fuel or exhaust off. You can move them forward and put it in a replacement behind. And these are what the actual camshaft lobes look like. And you see the grooves on the interior. You actually pump hydraulic fluid in there, and then that will stretch the lobe, and you can move it down the shaft, and then release the hydraulic pressure, and it'll tighten back up. All right. This is a fuel pump with a little bit of a problem. You notice the variable injection timing has been, the mechanism has been removed, and they've actually locked the rack in a certain position. I would not recommend that for today's engines. Specifically, you will have problems with this when you switch to distillate. Now, the reason for this is, and Burmeister Wayne has said that they have fixes for this now, but that heavy fuel oil, if it could solidify in some void areas and prevent that pump plunger from moving up and down. And when that happened, and people would get frustrated and just lock your variable injection tire. So, on this, if you look, you can see this void space right above the, the barrel of the pump. So, we've got, on the old design, that area, if fuel leaked in there, 
it could solidify and prevent the pump plunger from moving up and down. What they've done is plug the old old uh, line in the cover, and then you drill in and tap and put a new line right on the void space. And by doing that, you get better drainage of that fuel out of that space. And Burmeister Swain is saying that this is has solved that problem. Another one you can have is if the fuel gets down along the rack and the control sleeve, it can gum that up and also cause problems. So each time that you tear down one of these engines, you want to go into that lower rack assembly and clean it and make sure that fuel has been removed. Our final subject that we will be discussing is the effect of lubricity. And you can see on this pump plunger where it has been damaged from seizure. We will talk more about this when we get into the fuel oil changeover and fuel oil systems. But what is happening is, is they're running the fuel with too low a viscosity when they are switching over from heavy residual fuels to distillate fuels. You have problems on these engines maintaining the proper viscosity on distillate. The limit on distillate is two centistotes, which is a, typically in many of the fuels today is about 40 degrees C. Well, they have the fuel returning because of the from the, and picking up heat within the engine itself. In many cases that is you're up around 60 degrees C and your lubricity is going down lower than two centistotes and you have problems with with excess wear and and seizure of these pumps. So again, we'll talk more about this when we get into the fuel oil systems, but just realize that you have to, your fuel is lubricating the pump plunger and the barrel, and if you get your viscosity too low, you can lose lubricity, the oil foam breaks down, the metal touches, and you have seizure excessive wear. That concludes the, this presentation. Thank you for your attention.